Hey there friends, it is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back with another exciting lesson. Today I'm going to challenge you to use Tinkercad, the Glowforge, and some cardboard to make your own sweet wagon. So my friends, let's get cracking. So the first step, my friends, is for you to figure out how thick your cardboard is. That number matters the most for this whole project. Everything that I show you from here on out, you're going to have to adjust for your cardboard. My cardboard is four millimeters thick. Let me show you why that's going to be so important. So the idea behind this project is we are going to use the Glowforge to cut out the shapes and the notches so that all these pieces can stick together. You can see inside that hole there are notches that hold the little axles in place so that actually when we're done the wheels can spin. The only thing you're going to be allowed to build with is cardboard and straws. It's up to your teacher if you're allowed to use glue. I used a little tacky glue to make my sides sturdier and I used a little hot glue to hold my cardboard wheels on the axles. Let's start by clicking on Create New Design. If you've never worked in Tinkercad before, you should probably try out one of my other videos just so you've got your skills where you need. I'm going to type Wagon, and I'm going to put MDH up here. Since I've already made one, I'm going to put MDH number 2 so that it's a second copy. We need to set the grid up so that it's the same as a Glowforge. You need to click the box and you need to backspace. I'm going to tell you that a good number to use here is 470. And then I'm going to click the other side and I'm going to backspace this and make it 275. And then update the grid so it looks more like the Glowforge work area. So once again, this whole project is based on tabs. Bring out a rectangle, use the sweet fit view to selection, and let's make that rectangle fit our cardboard. Now I told you that my cardboard was four, so I'm just shrinking it with the black handle, and then I change the number to four. And then I'm gonna take the height of it, and I can see that better from one of the corners. So that's definitely the height and I can shrink it down exactly to four or I can go anywhere I want and just type the number four in the box. And then right now this little dude is 20 across. I am gonna make it 15 across. I could type any number and type 15. I just need to have that little part that's gonna be the tab that's on every piece of cardboard. I also need to have it as a hole. So I'm gonna do Control D, and I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna make it a hole. So let me show you quickly how these pieces can come together to make a wagon. I'm gonna bring out another rectangle and everything needs to be four high because that's how big the cardboard is. Once again, I could have just typed the number four. I'm gonna pick a length. I'm gonna say that I want my wagon to be 120 long. And if I look at that, I'm gonna say that I want it to be something like 60 or 70 wide. Once again, I stretch it and then I type the number. I'm gonna put a 70. That's a decent looking wagon shape. Unless, of course, you're too young to have ever played with a wagon, this is what I'm thinking about. This is the wagon I actually had when I was a kid, and I'm thinking of building something similar to those. Now, my goal is for you to have enough skills to build this. I'm just trying to give you an idea. So first, I'm going to cut these holes. I'm going to do Control D so that that one doesn't go away, and I'm going to move the other one close to the original shape. I'm going to select them both and I want to align it with the top corner and I want to align it with the left corner. Or I guess it would be the right corner if I was looking at it from that direction. I need to move these in a little bit so that there's room for them to get glued together. Remember it was four. I'm going to use that for my distance that I move it. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. I'm just nudging with the arrow keys. I'm going to take that whole piece and do control D. And I'm going to slide it all the way down to the other end, just using the arrow key. When it gets to that edge, I'm going to zoom in and take a good look to see if it's lined up. It is lined up, so then all I have to do is move it back. One, two, three, four. And now I've got those two spots totally matching. And that's an important thing is for you to be able to match your parts up. I'm going to hold down shift and click both of those, and I'm going to group them. And then I'm going to do control D and now I can just move over to the other side with the arrow keys. And then when I get to that side, I'm going to zoom over with the fit view to selection orbit to this back corner so I can really, really see. And that is lined up perfect. So that means now I can just move over 
one, two, three, four, and I've got holes that I can attach and drop my sides into. All I have to do is group them and it cuts it out and you can see what I'm talking about. So let's build the side. We're gonna bring out another one of these rectangles. We're gonna once again make it four high. And then if you remember right, we made it 120 long and I'm gonna do that by doing the typing thing. So that way I'm sure they're lined up. And then remember this guy is gonna have to stand up. So let's look at, at it from a corner and let's rotate it 90 degrees. Now when you rotate, if you stay close to the shape, they snap to those exact 22 and a half degree angles. If you move your mouse way away, like see I'm over here, it goes one degree at a time. So it's nice to stay close to the middle of the shape so then you can get it to the exact location you want easily. I'm gonna just hit fit view so you can see how it's under the ground or under the work plane. If we hit the letter D, it drops to that exact work plane. Now we wanna put this up here, so watch this trick. Work plane, I wanna put it here, hit the letter D and it drops to that exact height. I'm gonna use the arrow keys to line it up. And here is a sweet piece of magic. See that hole? That's where I want one of these tabs. So I'm just gonna do Control D. I'm going to hide my little edge. I'm gonna take my new piece and I'm gonna drop it in that hole. I'm gonna do Control D again. I'm gonna, oops, ha. I'm gonna do Control Z to get rid of that. I'm gonna set my work plane back down to the ground so it looks right. And I'm gonna drag this one into the hole as well. I'm gonna use fit views so that I can tell I lined it up perfect. Boom, stuck the landing. And now I can take all those parts together. I'm gonna to do show so I can see them. And when I hide the base, look at that. We have got one side for our cool cardboard wagon. When I hit group, you can tell that's a nice solid part. I will be able to duplicate that and put it on the other side. Let's do show all to bring it back. Let me tell you real quickly that you need to put axles under here. Let me show you a cool axle idea. You may come up with something better. I'm gonna start by using that little hole we've been using and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna move it over to where I would wanna put an axle. I'm gonna use fit view so I can zoom up to it. And this lets me move better where I want so I can show you what I would do like maybe here and here I'd put my axles and I would spread them apart a certain distance. You could do the math to get those perfect using the same techniques I showed you earlier. Then simply select them and group them so they cut out. When you've got those holes in place we need to build the little part that's going to hold our axles. Let me show you what I did to build that. First I took our tab and I'm gonna move it over to the side and this is gonna stick up in that hole and then I'm gonna use a round roof to attach it. But I'm gonna flip it over so it's upside down. Once again, staying close so it snaps to that 180 degrees. If you move away, it goes one at a time, which is much trickier. You wanna have it upside down and then we wanna put it under this piece. I'm gonna shrink it to that size four first. I'm gonna put the little tab on top by hitting the work plane to that flat space and doing D so it drops to the right height. I'm gonna set the work plane back down to the ground and I'm going to align those. I want them to be centered and I want them to be centered. Now the nice thing about this is as you can see, it's gonna slide up into that exact spot and then it's gonna be down below where we can have the actual hole where the wheels go. Let's jump out and do a little bit of planning about our wheels. Bring out a cylinder. Since it's gonna be cut out of the cardboard, make sure you do four millimeters. Make sure you hit that four millimeters and press enter. And then make sure you make the sides round. The more round your wheels are cut, the better they'll be. And then here you need to make a decision. Right now they're 20 by 20. I think you need to make them a little larger. You need to do a little math to get it right. I'm gonna do 25 by 25, once again, setting that to size four and pressing enter. 
And then because that's 25, that means I need at least uh, 13 or 14 of distance here so that the wheels don't rub. For me to make that happen, I'm just going to stretch this out until it says 30 and then stretch this out until it says 15. So now it's perfectly round. Once again, I'm going to set the work plane to the top of that shape. And now when I hit D, it'll drop that other piece to the very top. I'm going to do my align again. And I want to align them to the center. And now I've got the connector for where the wheel's going to go. And I can just group those like that. I need to put in the hole for where the axle's going to go. I'm going to hit work plane and set right on that side. Let's bring out a cylinder. I know my straws are 5 millimeters on its side, so I'm going to hold shift. And I'm going to shrink that down and type 6 millimeters. So there's 1 millimeter of space to help get through the straw exactly the way I want. I'm going to select them all again, and I'm going to line them to the middle. And this time I'm going to line them to the middle this way. So that way when the hole cuts out, I'll be able to have my wheel stand up beside it. And it won't rub on the bottom of the cardboard. Let's test it real quickly. Get my work plane back to the ground level. Rotate that little fella 90 degrees, once again staying close to the shape. I'm going to drop him right to this edge by pressing the letter D. All right, that looks like it's not going to have any space between that wheel and the bottom of my wagon. So I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to make sure those two pieces are aligned because you may have noticed those two were not exactly the way I want. So I'm going to ungroup them. I'm going to select them. Let's align them. And then I want to raise that up even more. So let's set the work plane back to the blue, and I'm going to go up five millimeters, five clicks. And then if I just take this shape and stretch it, it goes up five more. That place stays where I want, and now my wheel will definitely have room. Set my work plane back to the ground. And now I'm going to hold down shift, click the little hole, click the centerpiece, and group them. So now as we spin around, we can see that, that wheel will definitely have room to be attached and not rub on our wagon. All right, so let's quickly add the axle hole to our wheel. Once again, I'm going to hit work plane. I'm going to get on the wheel, bring out that cylinder, make sure it is round as can be by giving it all 64 sides. Hold down shift and start shrinking. Type the number six for how big you want that to be. I'm going to hold down shift and select the wheels. And I want to align them as well. We need them centered, centered. And then we don't want this centered because it would poke into our blue thing. But if you look like that, I lined it up so it's not. As a matter of fact, I'm going to hide the blue piece. And now you can see that wheel is groovy. And I'm going to group it. Bring back the show all tool. You can line up your wheel to make sure that it looks the way you want. Right there I can see that that is pretty nifty. And then I'm going to take those two pieces. I'm going to move this away so that it's not connected. First let's set that work plane back to the ground. See how those are bumping into each other? I'm just going to separate them a little bit. And I am going to group them for a moment. And then I'll break them apart when it's time to build. But check this out. You can actually build your whole project um, before you actually build your project. So I've grabbed both of those. I'm going to hit the work plane. I'm going to click on this spot, and I'm going to drop it to that height. So now you can see how the wheels are going to be in that spot. They're going to sit on top of those cool little axle holders. I can click on this piece and nudge it into place. So that is how it will look when we cut them in. And that is how you make a laser cut wagon. 
not giving you everything but enough so that you can get one started. All right, friends, so let me show you what this looks like when you wrap it up. I'm going to go back to Tinkercad, and I'm going to open my previous design, which was not as good, but it had the same type of style. Now, what I want to show you here is how you should build this twice. You should have an assembled version where you proved that everything snapped where it's supposed to be. You should have the little wheel things underneath and make sure that you have room for your wheels. Once you've got that version in place, you need to take and duplicate it. So if you haven't seen this yet, which I'm sure you have, it's just the duplicate button or control D and then disassemble it and then save and print each piece separately. So to do that, all you do is click on export and you need to do SVG. And then if you're in my room, make sure you use the STL folder and then export each piece separately for use in the Glowforge. So I'm going to do... I'm going to click on the end piece first, choose export, SVG, and then find the spot where I ask you to save them. And this is going to be wagon MDH, and this will be the end. And notice I only grabbed one of the two because I can cut them twice. This will be the side. Once again, export, SVG, and this one's going to be labeled side. And you may want to end up putting these all in a folder so they're easier to find. I'm going to call these hubs. Once again, SVG and hub. And I'm not going to do this all on camera, but let me show you what it looks like in the Glowforge. So in the Glowforge, I've imported the hub. I'm going to pull it to my cardboard where it's printable. I'm going to do control C and control V because remember I need to make four of those. If you zoom in, sometimes they are easier to place. And then I can drag a rectangle that grabs both of them and do control C and control V again to get all four. If you accidentally stretch them, you can do control Z and then just get them arranged for printing. Now the settings that I use are my one by 200 by 100 by four millimeter cardboard. Remember, if your cardboard's thicker, you need to change that, and you need to also make sure you have settings that you're comfortable with with your printer. Cardboard is front and free, but it is also burnable, and you wanna make sure you don't have anything combust in your Glowforge. Now I'm gonna add and upload another piece of artwork. Whatever D-I-D-E is, I think that was supposed to be side, but I missed the letter. You can see this is the same cardboard I cut my other one out of. Now I would do control C and control V to make another one of those. Find a place to put it and once again set its settings the same as the others. And you just bring in all your parts, arrange them on the cardboard. Notice mine is offline, that's because I've got it powered off at the moment. There you can see I fired it up super quick. Let's select the material. I always use uncertified and mine once again was four millimeters thick. You notice they adjust a little bit when it refocuses. Make sure you move your cardboard to somewhere that it can actually cut. All right, so friends, once again, I'm showing you that it's possible, but I want you to make such a cooler wagon than me. Mine does roll. It's using straws and cardboard as promised. There's no handle, though. There's no holes in the sides. There's all kinds of things you can do to make this way, way more cool, and I just want to see what you can turn out. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.